In this video, I will be showing how to clean out a DJB Engineering steam whistle. So if we turn the locomotive round, so you can see the cab mounted steam whistle. Now this is a manual steam whistle. And you need to separate these two parts here that I'm pointing at. So we turn the loco locomotive round again, and then open up the cab roof. You need to disconnect the pipe from the valve to the whistle itself and now I've already taken off the cable tie which is usually fitted. Now I'm going to work it off by holding the whistle and then using my finger and thumb on the other side and working it loose. That should come off like that and then we can slide the whistle out now which is just to push for it. And there we go, there's the whistle out. Now we can put the locomotive uh, to one side so we can work on the whistle. And here's the whistle. Hopefully you can see it. We need to get this little tiny grub screw out. There you go, the camera's focused now. So if I get me screwdriver and a tub lid, so I can hold all the parts. There you go. So I'm going to undo this grub screw. Now if I undo it a little bit, I can then withdraw the aperture housing from the spindle. There you go, that's the spindle. Put that to one side. And then I can take that grub screw fully out and then put that on to the tub lid I've got there so I don't lose it. It is very tiny grub screw. I think it's an 8, 8 BA stainless steel grub screw so it's very very small. You can see me pushing it around on the lid just trying to pick it up unsuccessfully. There you go. You see how small it is. So if we bring it closer to the camera you can see the ring gap of the aperture what we've got to clean out. We've got to separate the two pieces. There we go, top and bottom bits there. So if I put the lid aside and bring in my vice from my pillow drill in. There we go. And it's painted, it's got rounded edges and a V-notch in it. So it shouldn't mark up the brass and the V-notch in it should hold it. So if I place the whistle into the vise, start doing it up. So I'm not going to do it fully tight. I'm just going to do a couple turns at a time. Give the uh, bottom bit a twist to see if, it'll, if it's still moving in the vise, which it is there. So I'll do up a little bit more. In fact, I might have to reposition the whistle in the vise just a little bit. So back it off. Make sure it's in that V notch in the vise. Do it up and then see if that's clamped it, which it has. So I'm working it backwards and forwards because it's an interference fit. And it has to be quite tight fit. So if you work it backwards and forwards, it should come off like that. Now, if I bring the bottom bit closer to the camera, you might see a little bit of the scale that's on there. That's obviously blocking it up, stop it from whistling. Now if we get the top bit of the whistle out, the vise, you can probably see a bit more scale on there. Now this has come out of the boiler obviously, but my boiler was brand new when I fitted this whistle, so it's probably a lot of the muck that's left over from manufacturing of the boiler that's uh, got into the whistle and blocked it up. So now I've cleaned all those pieces up, we can start reassembling the whistle. So we pick up this bit. There we go. And then we need to line up the threaded hole with the top part of the whistle, which has also got the threaded hole. So we need to work the grub screw right through those two parts of the whistle. So before we push the top part of the whistle in, we need to line up the holes for the grub screw. There we go. 
go. Push that down through, and then hopefully, in a minute, if I bring it closer to the camera, you can see the hole. Where they look in line there. So I'm going to push it home. There we go. So those two bits back together, ready for the grub screw to go back in. Now if I can pick the grub screw up, obviously it's very small, so I'm tipping the lid around, trying to pick it up. Now I've got to poke it around with a screwdriver so I can pick it up with my finger and thumb. There we go, absolutely tiny thing. I'll start winding that in. My screwdriver just start it off so it doesn't fall out again and we get the very bottom of the whistle and put the rod in through that hole there and we get the screwdriver again and just not fully tighten it but just nip up a little bit so it stops it from dropping out. And now we can set the aperture gap, which is 93 thousandths of an inch, or what I'm using here, or will be using here, is a three 30 seconds of an inch drill bit. You can see the instructions there, the gaps, and also in the instructions, it says you can use a 330 seconds drill bit, which is 93 thousandths of an inch. I think it's around 2.2 millimeters. So we'll pick up the whistle again and the drill bit. Place the drill bit in there. See, I need to work it in a bit, close that gap up a bit bit too much a bit fiddly but take your time with it get there and it will uh, sound right then I'm just about there now so I'm gonna do up that grub screw being careful not to knock it around and lose my gap there we go just double check that that's good, which it is. Now I can line up the two pipes and then fit it back onto the locomotive. So if I bring the locomotive back in, and all I have to do is just push the pipes through those two holes in the spectacle plate. It's just a slight fit. And there we go, if we lift the lid up, I can then push the silicon pipe back onto the whistle. So I'm turning it around now. Okay, you can see pushing the pipe back on. And we'll put a cable tie back on there later on once I've tested it. And I've verified that it's working again. So there we go. So next job is to take it outside and steam it up. So close the lid. There we go. Let's take this outside. Right, now we've got a running and up to pressure. It's time to test the steam whistle. We might take a few blasts to clear out the condensation and to warm up the whistle itself before it starts sounding right. So we'll do it again in a minute. Wasn't sure reading the instructions 
Um, so I contacted, contacted DJB Engineering. It was very helpful and turns out really simple. So hopefully if you've got the same problem, this video helps you out. I know sometimes it's easier to watch someone do the job and then to read instructions with pictures. Um, so hopefully uh, this video helps and thanks for watching and I'll see you again.